to another episode of the Draw Control Podcast. On today's episode, I am joined by sophomore on the Clemson Women's Lacrosse team, Julian Bell, as the team captain in 2021 and 2022. Uh, Julian was a crucial component of the Bedford High School Lacrosse team, uh, a member of the team's midfield slash attack. She was recognized with the team's Bulldog Award, which is given to the MVP as well as the player that demonstrates the most leadership both on and off the field. Julian also earned first team All-State in 2021 and 2022, and she was a New Hampshire senior All-Star uh, lacrosse member. Uh, so thank you so much, Julian, for coming on the podcast today, and how's everything going? Thank you for having me. It's going really well. I mean, school's been busy, but I mean, I can't complain. That's good to hear. And obviously, you know, you're coming off a pretty serious injury uh, from last season. So how are you feeling right now and sort of what stage of the recovery process are you in um, at this moment? Yeah, so my injury is kind of a long story. I, it actually started when I was in seventh grade. So it's been a chronic injury for me. Um, I had chronic stress reactions in both my shins. Um, so I got a bunch of metal put in there in March. So it's been a pretty heavy recovery so far. Um, it's been a little bit longer than I expected, but, um, currently, well, I had to relearn how to walk, how to jog and how now I'm learning how to run again. Um, which is just crazy to think about all the components that go into running and like a good running form. Um, so I'm working on getting a little bit faster and shorter, um, distances and see if I can hold that, uh, form for as long as I can. Um, so that's where I'm at right now. I mean, it's been pretty difficult, but I mean, I've made some huge strides, so I'm really excited about that. Yeah. And obviously while you're sort of recovering with that, did you have the, any chance to sort of train, uh, for the upcoming season? And if so, what were some things uh, I guess you wanted to work on outside of, you know, trying to do the basic functions of lacrosse, like walking and running? Yeah. Um, so I actually stayed in Clemson over the summer to, um, do some PT. I wanted to be on campus in front of all the doctors and the trainers so I can be with them every day versus at home. I'd have to go into PT maybe once or twice a week if I'm lucky. So I definitely wanted to stay here and get in front of them as much as I could. Um, but outside of that, outside of PT and, um, I couldn't really do any other cross training. It was very strict what I was allowed to do. But I mean, I've got wall ball, classic wall ball. So I just did that as much as I could, you know, keeping my stick skills sharp and, you know, watching film. I love to watch lacrosse games. That's, you know, a huge hobby of mine is just watching old lacrosse games, old college games, whether it was our games or other teams. Um, so definitely just staying on top of all of that while, you know, learning to walk and stuff again. Um, that's just been my main focus so far. Now, obviously, fall ball for your team has just started. Um, you guys have some new faces on the team this year with freshmen and some transfers as well. Um, how have they connected to your team this fall and sort of uh, what's the fall ball uh, season been like from your perspective? Yeah, so it's crazy. I mean, I feel like we have another team one again because there's <laughs> so many girls graduated and we have, you know, again, like so many new faces. Um, so doing it year one for the second time, there's some veterans on our team. I guess you can call them veterans, but um, you know, just trying to connect with those girls, like our returners trying to connect with those new girls the best we can. Cause we know what it's like to be the new face and learning all of, um, the new players tendencies and stuff like that on the field. But I will say, I mean, all of the transfers and the freshmen have done a great job just connecting right away. The chemistry is amazing. Um, you know, we're learning each other's tendencies. I feel like we learned each other's tendencies in the first week or so. Um, so fall ball has looked really good so far. And I mean, that's pretty encouraging that we learned all that so quickly. So hopefully come spring, it all comes together. Now, this is your team's second year in the ACC. ACC. So uh, what are your team's goals and expectations uh, for next season? Have you guys sat down and sort of thought about that? Or is it something that, you know, you just take it each game by game? So, I mean, Clemson's like motto is best as a standard. So we definitely uphold that. And we expect a lot from ourselves. Our coaches expect a lot from us. Um, our trainers, everybody expects a lot from us. And especially being a new sport at Clemson, having all of that, um, you know, public support has been huge for us and just gives us more motivation. Um, we also talk about 1% better every single day. So whatever that looks like for every single player, as long as you're getting 1% better each and every day, I mean, that's, that's the best you can do. And our coaches also really nailed down just competing every single day and every single drill, just, you know, iron sharpens iron type of thing is we want to make 
practices harder than games so that come game time we can execute everything to the best of our abilities and just challenge each other because you're not going to get better if you don't challenge yourself yeah absolutely and obviously like you mentioned you sort of have you you used to during your time with uh, Clemson it's sort of been two kind of different teams with so much transition the last two years so is it weird learning new systems with different players how does that adjustment work and is there a little bit of rust when that starts off and how long does it take before things like start connecting and working together? And um, do you think your team is going to be able to take sort of that next step this season compared to what you guys did last year? Yeah. So last year and this year, kind of a similar thing happened. I mean, people are coming from, sometimes there's two girls from one team that come to Clemson. Some, I mean, most of them are just one from each school. Um, so all those, think about all those different coaching styles coming together and just, scrimmage for the first practice just to see what it looks like type of thing it, it can get a little wonky but I mean this year I think we did a little bit better with that I feel like we have some we have a younger team last year there's a ton of fifth years and you know they I feel like the girls this year are able to connect with each other a little bit more because I think there was more um a lot of the girls played together in high school, like on their club teams or knew each other from Under Armour or stuff like that. So they knew each other a little bit more prior to like than last year's team. Um, so definitely a little bit rusty in the beginning. I mean, still, still learning. I mean, we're still getting through all of that, but I'm, I'm just very impressed with all the girls, how they've transitioned to Clemson lacrosse wise, but just to the school in general and the vibe and the coaching style that our coaches have. And I mean, it's been pretty smooth sailing. Now, for you individually, what do you want to see yourself accomplish? So right now, um, I have two main goals. So obviously, the team comes first for me, um, especially last year. I was redshirted, so I had to kind of figure out what the team needed from me um, and kind of work through that the best that I could. But I obviously want to get back on the field. I mean, I can't wait. <laughs> can't wait any longer, but um, definitely being that – Taking what I learned in high school, being a captain my junior year and senior year due to the lack of seniority on the team, um, just taking that leadership role on as best as I can, filling those shoes that the fifth years left for us. Um, I think that's really important because it was a little bit weird for me to be a junior captain and kind of leading the seniors. So it was kind of a weird dynamic. I was really close with them, but it's just something that just you know, it was a little weird for me in the beginning, but I feel like that is the same thing here is just everybody on the team has a role and, you know, just speaking up when you can and encouraging your teammates whenever you can too. And just making sure that chemistry is still there being injured and sitting on the sideline. You're not on the field. Um, obviously you're not on the field and not getting that connection on the field. So reaching out as much as I can is a big goal for me and just talking to the coaches, watching film and, asking questions. Um, that's been my main goal and obviously just executing rehab the best that I can. And, you know, hopefully everything will fall into place. When do you expect to uh, start playing again? So it's kind of interesting. Um, the surgery that I got is only done 20 times a year in the U S so, and the staff here doesn't have a ton of um, just experience with, they have experience with the surgery I got, not the chronic side of it. So um, I'm kind of like a little bit of a guinea pig in, in that situation, but I was supposed to be, they thought my recovery time would be about six months um, to a point where I'm like comfortable, but I'm, I'm about six to seven months right now. I'm comfortable, but not playing on the field yet. So I can do passing drills. I can do some dodging if it's not contact. Um, but again, I'm working on that speed aspect of it and I'll get into agility a little bit later and then I'm, I'm back on the field. So I can't wait. Do you think you'll be back by the start of the season or do you think it's going to be a few weeks into the season before we see you on the field again? The goal is the start of the spring. So that's we'll good. See how that's that good. Goes. <laughs> well, let's transition now and sort of talk about the beginning of your career and sort of work all the way up to where you are today. So uh, like I mentioned in the intro, you're from Bedford, New Hampshire. So uh, talk about growing up there and how'd you start playing lacrosse? Yeah, I feel like the first thing people think of is like, you're from New Hampshire and you play lacrosse. Like, it's just so random. But I mean, lacrosse is really becoming bigger in New Hampshire. We have a lot of great teams. We, my team, my club team did really well. Um, you know, Stanford girls, UVA, like we, we did really well. So um, 
you know, coming out of a state that's not necessarily like a hotbed, like New York and Maryland, um, I tried to get to as many camps as I could growing up. And from the get go, my my parents played lacrosse, my sister plays lacrosse, and my brother played lacrosse in high school and not in college. But so I pretty much grew up all around it. So I knew I knew from a very young age that I wanted to play for as long as I can. Um, so, I mean, we just like coming from New Hampshire has been a little bit more difficult to get in front of coaches. But again, my club team was able to get to Maryland tournaments and get in front of all those good coaches. So, I mean, it was, it kind of all fell into place. I've just been playing lacrosse since first grade and I I don't want to stop until, you know, it's all over. And growing up, who was like your favorite lacrosse player and team you like to watch? That's a good question. I I feel like I had so many favorites because I love watching all the teams, but I'd say, um, Kenzie Kent from Boston College. Um, I loved Callie Hartshorn from Maryland and Marie McCool from UNC. So they they were they all played very different, but I've always just loved to watch them play. They were so fun to watch and the games were amazing. They were just I've rewatched them a million times. Now before college, you played for your high school at Bedford. So uh what was your high school lacrosse experience like with that team and sort of what did you take away from uh those years when you look back on it now? I feel like my um, career at Bedford was a little bit like a roller coaster, honestly. My freshman year, I was the only freshman on varsity. I was very intimidated, and it was my first year with my sister, um, a lot of seniors on the team. So I I ended up starting every game, which I was very proud of, but it was definitely daunting. Um, So that was my freshman year. Sophomore year was when COVID hit, so that kind of all fell apart um but then junior year it was like I I felt like I was a freshman and then all of a sudden I was a captain so Mm -hmm. I really had to transition very quickly and you know I talked with my coach a lot to figure out how that was going to look and you know what my role was going to look like um but yeah being like a little I felt you know smaller when I was a freshman but then immediately being placed in that leadership role is something I'm very proud of because I adjusted very quickly and you know our team did really well we've always been in the semifinal game for a championship game. Um, I never won a championship, which sucks, but <laughs> um, we did really well. We always had a young team after COVID. So um, bringing my teammates up to that standard of, you know, we can, we can play against older girls and, you know, leading the best I can is, you know, I take a lot of pride of that bringing back to college. Yeah. Elaborate a little more about what you learned in that captain role as, especially as a junior, because you usually don't see that for anybody. Yeah. Yeah. So um we didn't have a ton of seniors at the time, but um, I my coach had told me from pretty much when COVID hit that she was, you know, trying to get me to fill that fill those shoes pretty quickly. So just, um, you know, I think the biggest thing for me was to support all the girls the best that I could, um, whether that be on the field and like encourage them to try something new or, you know, have confidence. I think that was a huge thing that our team not lacked, but kind of struggled with when we're playing older teams or girls that had a bunch of seniors and we had a bunch of freshmen and sophomores. So I think that was um, a huge thing, but off the field, you know, just team bonding as much as you can, you know, reaching out to each other, going to grab lunch and stuff. I think those things are really important, especially then coming to college, you kind of hear the same type of thing. You need, I mean, like you're with your team every single day, built in friends, but um, having that same bond outside of lacrosse is really important. What's your favorite memory from your high school days? Uh, since I know you didn't win a championship. That's usually what people go to, but <laughs> yeah. I'm curious if there's anything else that sticks out to you. Yeah. I mean, I th- we played the same team every time in the championship. So we, we were so close every single time. So I, I definitely love those memories. I mean, getting the championship game is, is an amazing memory in and of itself, but um, I, I'm really close with my sister. So I think that was probably my favorite memory is, my freshman year, like having her and playing with her. And then, I mean, lost her to COVID after that. But, um, you know, I think it was just so much fun. I didn't play with her in a few years in middle school. And at least I had that one last chance to play with her. So that was exciting. And talk a little bit more about how your high school lacrosse experience sort of helped prepare you for college lacrosse and sort of made that transition easier for yourself. Because you were mentioning on some of your club teams that you were playing with other D1 commits, which I know you said that like a lot of people from New Hampshire probably don't, a lot of people who aren't from New Hampshire don't really see it as like a lacrosse hotbed, but I feel like it's definitely growing. Like you mentioned, if all those players in your club team are going D1 and having success like you are. Mm-hmm. 
So um, I definitely say, I mean, I've mentioned this a lot, but leadership, I mean, on, I feel like that is just a huge aspect of any team. Um, if you can lead each other and help make your other teammates better, I think that is just the biggest part. I mean, coming from high school too, you know, a lot of the girls going D1, they're usually the best on their high school team, or, you know, they just have a bigger head, honestly. But once you get to college, I mean, everybody's the best. So being able to work with all of um, the other girls and figuring out their tendencies and not only like making yourself better, but being unselfish and making sure the whole team, like knowing you're part of something bigger than yourself, I think is the biggest thing that, um, you know, helped me prepare for college. Now, what was your recruiting process like with Clemson and what made you want to go there versus other schools that might have looked at? This is a good question. Um, so they announced the team, what was it, 2021? So I was recruited before that. I decommitted from a previous school. And then they just announced that Clemson was going to have a team right after that. And I was so bummed growing up because I knew a lot of people from my town that had gone to Clemson and they loved it, but I never considered it because they didn't have a team and I knew I wanted to play lacrosse in college. So um, when they found out that they had a team, my recruiting director was like, Hey, you should, you should reach out to Clemson. So I emailed them. I like spammed their email. And then I got on the phone with Allison. Um, I think a few weeks after that, when she was announced. Um, and then I was on campus a week after that and committed, I think a day or two after. So, but Clemson overall, um, you know, I was really drawn. I, the weather's a lot nicer here, first of all, <laughs> but, um, just, I love the big football school. It's a lot of school spirit. Um, and just when I came on campus, just all of the energy, everybody's so nice. Um, the sun is always shining. I mean, it's, it's just like the best school ever. It's, it's amazing. And just the facilities and the resources that they give us, it's, it's insane. So I'm very grateful to be here. You must miss the the fall foliage though. Um, in this time of year though, I will say, I feel like you got to be a little jealous about New Hampshire for that. Yes, I know. I, I am sad about that, but honestly, we're getting a lot of color right now. So, but it's still like 75 degrees out. So I'm definitely missing the fall foliage, but can't wait to go back for Thanksgiving and, you know, be home for a bit. Tough year for the football team, huh? Yeah, we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. Luckily, we have a few more years to see if they can, um, you know, potentially win a national championship. But yeah. I really like that uh, quarterback, though. I feel like he might get – I don't know, like it, – I don't know too much about college football, but he seems like mm -hmm. like he could be like a Trevor Lawrence type, yes. I guess. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely got a lot of attention, especially after the – the ACC championship game. I mean, he killed it. I I know him pretty well too. So he's oh really? He's, yeah, he's a nice guy. He's awesome. So that's awesome. Yeah. Now getting back to some lacrosse things now. So I know you you played two games as a freshman, but what was sort of like the biggest adjustment you took away from your two games in college lacrosse, and what'd you take away from just your freshman year in general? So right off the bat, I feel like just the speed of the game is on a whole new level, and the physicality. Um, those, I mean, I, I figured that out really quick from the practices, but it's just so much more fun. I feel like there's a lot more fluidity motion. It's so fast paced and it's very exciting. I feel like in high school, sometimes it's a little bit like there's a little bit of a lull sometimes, but that is the biggest difference. And it's, it's very obvious. I feel like when you watch a high school game versus a college game. Um, so yeah. And I mean, I, I love that aspect of it and my whole freshman year, I mean, just watching other girls play in person versus like watching. Um, I mean, I've watched UNC, I've watched Maryland, I've watched all those teams play on TV, but watching them in person, watching us compete with them is something that was really exciting for me on my, for my freshman year. And, you know, I look forward to doing that this year. I mean, hopefully I can be on the field and, you know, dip my toes in, but um, you know, I was grateful for that experience and being able to see that firsthand. You did score your first career goal against Gardner Webb, so at least you have that monkey off your back uh, heading into this season. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what what was that goal like for you? And just talk about what it sort of meant for you. Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, I I was still in pain. You know, I was like surgery was a conversation at that point, but I was like, I just want to get one under my belt. <laughs> but, so I just was like, okay, I'm just gonna dodge really hard once and see how it goes. And they set me up well, my teammates, you know, and. It was awesome. I mean, I, I think I was, yeah, it was Gardner Webb and yeah, it was nice to get that under my belt, get, 
first first college goal under my belt before I had to redshirt. But yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome, especially on um, at home. It was great. Now, how do you maintain your confidence and positivity when you're dealing with a long term injury like you've been dealing with really for a lot, lot more than just in your college career? Yeah. Oh, that's a good question. I mean, still figuring it out. You know, it's definitely not perfect. I've been through a lot of phases of (laughs) dealing with it. But um, I mean, when I was younger, it was just kind of repetitive. And I think I got a little bit more frustrated with it. It Like, why is this happening? And getting more hard on myself when I was younger as I was growing. But um, now, I mean, at the end of the day, like, it's just, it's just a game and I want to, I want to have fun and, you know, reminding myself that, that, I mean, it's, it's not going to be perfect. And just having faith that it's all going to work out has been the biggest thing for me. And just, you know, not talking down on myself or just asking for help, asking questions. If I'm confused about something, um, you know, I feel like talking about it is the best thing you can do any injury. I mean, I know ACLs are also brutal and so many it happens to so many girls and that recovery is also brutal so for any any injured athlete I think just talking to the girls that are injured or reaching out to coaches I think that's just really important now did you learn anything about yourself and the game just watching your team play this past year uh yeah I mean I loved watching how everybody took what they learned from their coaches and like brought it all together I think that is just awesome how we were able to do that so fast and we had successful games I mean we did pretty well for our first first year team so um just seeing how everyone was able to respond to each other's tendencies and really pick up on those and people watching the film and making sure that they were on top of that um I mean watching that is just something that I want to apply and like that's like I think the biggest thing that I learned is just learning from your teammates and, you know, how to set them up for success, but also like applying that to your own game, I think is really important. And one of the biggest lessons that I learned. So we're now in a segment I like to call six questions that have nothing to do with sports. And the goal of the segment (laughs) is to hopefully get to know you a little bit more off the field. Now, I know this question wasn't in the, uh, the thing I sent you, but uh, I noticed that there's been someone trying to make a cameo on this podcast. uh, So I just want to ask like, what type of dog do you have? Cause I've been hearing the barking a little bit in the background. Oh, you, oh my gosh, that's my roommate's <laughs> dog. But I have a I have a micro mini golden doodle. Okay. So he's four months. So he is little. <laughs> that's awesome. He's right here. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so he's been a great little addition recently. Probably helps makes the recovery process easier when you have like a bad day, I would imagine. Yes. Yeah, he's he's such a sweetheart. He's awesome. Well, let's ask you the first question, which is if there was a movie made about your life, uh, who would you want to play yourself? Oh, gosh. Like who would want to like play my role? Play yeah, me? like who would play Julian Bell in a movie about yourself? Oh, my gosh. I probably Emma Stone. I think she is just hysterical and her personality just adds so much to all the movies. So probably her. I love her energy. Now... What is the most underrated holiday and what's the most overrated holiday? I feel like underrated, I feel, is Valentine's Day. I don't know. I feel like people have such a negative connotation to that. But, I mean, you can give anybody flowers. I feel like that makes everyone's day. So, definitely that. Um, Overrated? Gosh, I I had a hard time with that one because I love Christmas, don't get me wrong, but there's also like Thanksgiving's also a great holiday. So I think it's a little bit overrated, but you know, don't quote me on that. <laughs> I think it's still awesome. I love Christmas. I think Christmas is properly rated in my opinion. I would say overrated for me is probably Halloween. Like after oh, you're, after you're a kid, like once you, if you can't go trick or treat anymore, it's kind of <laughs> That's boring. True. That's true. So I feel like it's, I feel like people try to romanticize Halloween and make it like feel better than actually is when you're adult, but like it kind of, it just doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't feel the same (laughs) when you're, you know, 20 years old versus when you're like 10. Uh, So that'll be my, that'll be my overrated. I'd say underrated for me is probably Thanksgiving just because it gets shadowed by uh, uh, Christmas and Halloween a little bit. So I'll go with that one. It does. It's kind of neglected, but yeah, I'm surprised (laughs) though. Most people think Valentine's day is very overrated. So I've never really heard it as underrated. It depends on how you look at it. 
I would agree. I think a lot of people hate it because, you know, they, they don't have someone to celebrate Valentine's yeah. Day with. That's probably, it's probably a little bit, a bit of that if, if I had a guess. Yeah, for sure. Now, what's the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week? That's a funny question. I'm doing this project in one of my health classes and, um, I've always heard my parents always told me growing up that we're supposed to do like a kind of a myth in like health. What your parents will tell you when you're growing up is that like cracking your knuckles will give you arthritis. <laughs> and I've, I did my project on that and cracking your knuckles just doesn't give you arthritis or does not make your fingers like fatter or anything like that. It's literally just little air bubbles in your synovial fu- fluid. Oh, that's so cool. That's I, I, read today. I didn't know that. I think the only thing lie that my parents told me was like turning on the light in the car was like a Illegal. bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I like I didn't think you could turn that on as an adult until like recently because it was always wired in my mind to never turn it on for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. I still don't understand that one. I don't know. I think it's because like when you have it on the back seat, it's hard to look in the back window because it blinds you a little bit. That's my that that's the only reason why I feel like um that's why they didn't want it to be turned on and off all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, at least that's what my parents was just trying to put in my parents head. Yeah. That's probably why they said <laughs> that to us. Um, now let's talk about your teammates for a little bit. Which player on the Clemson Lumens across team has the best off the field style besides yourself? Ooh, besides myself. <laughs> um, I'd say Hannah Hillcoff. I feel like she has a great shoe game. I mean, she has shoes for every outfit and she wears very like pastel kind of neutral colors, but her shoes always match i don't know how she does it but it, she always looks great if you could only watch one movie for the rest of your life which movie would it be this one is i feel like gonna be a little bit of a hot take but kicking and screaming have you seen that movie i've never even heard of it with will ferrell so any will ferrell <laughs> movie honestly would be mine but kicking and screaming you gotta watch it it's a all right i'll definitely <laughs> find it see if it's on like netflix or something i would say for me probably miracle uh oh, yeah. really really think like that how motivational that movie is so i'd go with that one Mm -hmm. uh last one is what is one item on your bucket list that you hope to accomplish one day and it can't be lacrosse related like obviously it's like to win a national championship but outside of that i want to go hang gliding i I feel like that'd be so much fun that does sound fun i feel like Mm -hmm. uh probably fly hot air balloon i feel like that'll be cool because it's not that dangerous but it's still kind of daring so i feel like that would be cool yeah, I've, I went um, to Hawaii last year and people were hang gliding in like the valleys and it was it was so cool. So that's definitely on my bucket list. Let's get back to some questions now before we uh, end this thing off. Uh, what should be done to help grow women's lacrosse from your perspective? Sorry, what was that? What, was that uh, what should be done to help grow women's lacrosse from your perspective? Sorry, you glitched a little bit. Um, I think definitely just publicity and education. I feel like pushing the idea of lacrosse out there. I mean, we've had to do it so much down South because it's really not, I mean, people have asked me, I've been walking around with my lacrosse stick and people are like, is that racquetball? And I'm like, no, not quite. But um, definitely just using like social media and stuff to our advantage. I mean, so many people are, have eyes on social media. So as soon as we can get more out about lacrosse and more events and stuff like that and educating people on lacrosse. I mean, so many young girls have come to camps at Clemson and have now loved it. My cousin being one of them from Georgia, that's just lacrosse really isn't a thing. So she is now loving it. She wants to play in college. So just having events like that too can really help, you know, younger girls and, you know, just gain more publicity for lacrosse. Now, for all the younger people that are listening to this podcast, what advice would you give them on what it takes to be a college player like yourself? I'd say definitely stepping outside your comfort zone. I feel like that's kind of cliche, but, um, you know, staying consistent with that too. I had an old coach, um, she was my club club team coach, and she would have us do all these crazy stick tricks and crazy shots and, you know, bad pass drills, stuff like that. Just everything that kind of feels little weird and like dodging sequences, stuff like that. Um, Once you nail those and it just helps you gain so much more confidence. I feel like you, I can catch any ball, you can throw any shot um, and just staying consistent with that and having fun in the process. You know, you don't, it's at the end of the day, just a game, but you know, pushing yourself, holding yourself to that standard and trying new things has really been helpful for me. 
Now, do you have any shout outs you want to give uh, to your family members, teammates, friends, and who should we have on the podcast next? I know you said before we start recording that we should have your sister on, but so you yes. can give her a shout out and give that suggestion. But if there's anyone else, uh, feel free to let me know. Yeah, my sister Chamberlain Bell, she goes to George Washington University. Definitely her. And then um, one girl on my team, Sarah Palmasano. She is number seven. She's an attacker. Awesome teammate. Awesome player. So definitely her. Well, Julian, thank you so much for coming on the pod. I, I really appreciate your time. It means a lot to myself. I think you're a great player and even better person. So I just want to let you know that. And best of luck in your injury recovery. And hopefully we get to see you back on the field doing big things with Clemson. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.